Shane Waldron and Matt Eberflus talks about what makes Caleb Williams special, while Caleb Williams also has the perfect response to the Patrick Mahomes comparisons. We're going to talk about that, plus Matt Eberflus's comments on Roma Dunze, and what has Shane Waldron shown that already puts him in a better position than Luke Getze? We're talking about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host there, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today. And I want to start off with Matt Eberflus' comments in regards to what makes Caleb Williams special. And he said this, in the red zone there, you have some things in terms of like being able to extend plays. Every quarterback in the league extends plays in the red zone. I think he means every good quarterback. He does that. He's very good at it. He had, he had a touchdown there. Obviously, I talked to Rome after the game about learning where your feet are and filling that out, but it's been good. It's been good. But again, there's a balance there between throwing the ball on time and scrambling when you have to. He has a good balance of that. And this is, you know, we talked about yesterday how Bears fans have made kind of blanket comparisons and taken away comparisons to anything or anybody else. That is what Kayla Williams is showing. The ability to extend plays with his legs to still try to make a play down the field, right? Now, if he needs to make a play and break away with his legs, he has enough speed and athleticism to do that as well. But Caleb is a quarterback that's always looking to be and make a play with his arm. But that dual threat ability, Right. Don't overlook that and how that can continue to become a weapon for the Chicago Bears, especially while we're looking to continually evolve and to kind of establish what this offense is going to be next season. And that's what can make Caleb Williams a special quarterback. It's the arm strength that he has, the still ability to scramble, but the fact that he has that big play mentality and his ability to process the defense. When you throw all those things into one package, that is where you can start getting into that special and generational that some people have labeled uh category now it's up to Caleb to show that he's going to be able to do that consistently that he's going to be able to be relied on to do that and he's going to you know continue to look to learn the defense and what defenses are throwing at him to be able to be effective in that now everything isn't going to be told just in Caleb Williams rookie season I'll say this we've seen quarterbacks have solid rookie seasons before not necessarily in the Bears uniform but we've seen it and that kind of be where it stays at right so you the, the continued development It's kind of the most special thing about Caleb. And one of the things that stand out to me is that this guy, he just wants to continually learn and he wants to be great. And that 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 strive, that 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 dedication he has to being great. Hopefully it'll pay off for the Chicago Bears. Now, Shane Waldron also commented on Caleb Williams. He says this. It's a great trait that he has when we get over to the sideline and you look at the surface. But before you even look at the surface, he can already tell you of the why behind each read. And and I think to me, that is the most important part. It's it's if he's not seeing it clearly or something like that, that's where you really need to go back and go through it. But he sees it clearly, can really talk about the different windows. Not just being able to diagnose what happened, but the whys that it happened. That's what goes into being hopefully a good quarter, a great quarterback for the Chicago Bears, right? That's what Caleb Williams has. And the fact that they've already picked up on these things from this young guy, what have I talked about so much throughout preseason? It's about the process, not necessarily just the result, because you can't get to the results without going through the process. And so Caleb Williams' processing of what is happening out there on the field is a big sign that he's going to be able, because we know he has the ability, right? You trust that he has the ability, but that is one of the things is the understanding of why and how. And that is something that could separate Caleb Williams. Now, again, we only have preseason games to go off of so far, and albeit that, a very small sample size, even in preseason. So, got to watch to see how that's going to continually to grow for Caleb Williams, for sure. But that processing part of it, that's the special part of it. And let's hope that Caleb can bring it, man. Let's hope that, that all this potential and all these things that we hear about Caleb end up coming true to fruition. Because... You know, he's heard the comparisons, which we'll talk about in a second. We've all seen the comparisons, both to former Chicago Bears quarterbacks and other quarterbacks from other organizations. But Caleb Williams has talked about it. And I guess we'll go ahead and get into this. When Caleb Williams was asked about what, what, uh, about his Patrick Mahomes comparisons and things like that, you know, when it comes down to it, he says this, we're excited. To your question, it's respect. I'm cool and all, but I'm Caleb Williams. Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Tyreek Hill is Tyreek Hill. Uh, much love to them and to the things like that. I met them, talked to them both, things like that. 
but we're here to win games for the Chicago Bears. And that is something that I've kind of, you know, I've gotten a little criticism for is that I don't really do comparisons. I don't like comparisons. I think that there are too many intricacies. The things that make players special are the intricacies. You can have somebody with a similar skill set, but it's either a different caliber of player or just how they use that skill set is very different, is wildly different. So, you know, that's why I don't like typically get into comparisons. Even when we did our draft analysis, I don't really get into comparisons. I just talk about what the strengths of those players are. And Kayla Williams understands what the pressure is of him drawing those Patrick Mahomes comparisons. That's a lot of pressure to put on a young quarterback. And even outside the Patrick Mahomes, how many Bears fans have compared it to C.J. Stroud and said, well, if, Patrick, if, if Kayla Williams is truly generational, he should have a rookie season like, like C.J. Stroud. Like, it's not the same. And while I understand when we see something, our brains naturally go to what can we compare it to? What have we seen that reminds us like the most like that? And that's a fair place to be in, right? You see that consistently. We all do that with all aspects of life. But when you get into it, Caleb Williams just needs to be the best version of Caleb Williams. He doesn't have to go out and try to beat C.J. Stroud's rookie year. He doesn't have to go out and try to beat the first year of Jordan Love as, you know, even though he wasn't a rookie, his first year as a full-time starter with the Packers. He doesn't need to be Patrick Mahomes. He needs to be what the Chicago Bears need him to be, and that is the best version of Caleb Williams. If he draws comparisons and does some things like those guys over the course of that, that stretch, fine. All fine and dandy. But it comes down to Caleb Williams being the first great Caleb Williams. And that's what we can hope. And like I said in yesterday's episode, there are more enough things about Caleb Williams games where there are legitimate criticisms. And in no way is anybody beyond criticism. I don't care if you win the Super Bowl. You're still going to get criticisms about your game. So, you know, anybody who thinks that anybody's beyond reproach or beyond criticism, I just think that you're not being realistic there. But those those criticisms that Caleb Williams has, and he's going to naturally draw with, you know, being art getting that title of generational in the draft, you know, that comes with comparisons, that comes with criticisms, that comes with judgment over the finer details of how you're quarterbacking this team. Then you throw on top of that the fact that you're the quarterback of the Chicago Bears who moved on from a quarterback who haven't had the greatest history of quarterbacks. All those things go into their expectations, the criticisms, the comparisons, the weight. All those things are going to be thrown and lobbied towards Kayla Williams for the majority of his career, as long as he's a member of the Chicago Bears and even outside of that, as long as he's in the NFL, he's going to draw those things. How does he deal with them? How does he process them? How does he show, prove, or be greater even than some of the criticisms or comparisons for him? That's the thing that matters here. And so throughout what we've seen from Caleb Williams so far, in the little bit, a little very glimpse of it, and again, of course, the caveat is out there that it doesn't matter right now because it's preseason. But when it's on, when it matters, when the games matter and every single decision, both good and bad that you make, are, are going through that fine-tooth comb because they're going to end up in your overall record, that's the important part of it. And we'll see what leads to Kayla Williams. I was notorious as a guy that I would have loved to see the Chicago Bears give Justin Fields the weapons that Kayla had. But it doesn't matter anymore, right? And, and, and you know, besides outside the last, you know, couple of episodes, and, and people drawing comparisons, I haven't really brought it up because it doesn't matter. The thing that matters now is that number 18 is our quarterback. And unless you're not, unless you're not an actual Bears fan and you're more a fan of the player, that the more, most important thing who's ever in that, whoever is the QB1, is that they succeed. And, and that's in any position on this team. I want everybody on this team to succeed. As much as I'm somebody who's not a Valus guy, I don't believe in Valus Jones. I don't think that Valus Jones is going to turn into anything special. I just don't believe it. I think that, you know, Valus is a guy that has some really great speed, but that really doesn't mean that you, that doesn't make you a really good football player. But if the Bears keep him and the Bears are giving him opportunity, I hope that he does succeed at it. You guys know, I, was, I was, wasn't I was a Kendall Verdor dude. I hated Kendall Verdor. But if he was to succeed, cool, great. Do it in a Bears uniform. At the end of the day, I, mean, I, I get I'm, sm I'm speaking to a very small, minor part of, of, the, of the Bears community. At the end of the day, if you look at this situation and you're rooting against Caleb or any other Chicago Bear just so you can be right about something separately, it's stupid. It's stupid, right? It, it's really dumb to do that. Now, you can, and again, that does not take away from the fact of, hey, I got these things that I'm concerned about with Caleb. And I, and I want him to prove me wrong, but these things are here, and he hasn't shown me anything to show that I shouldn't be concerned about those things. That's fair. That's critical thinking. That's criticism. But to actively wish bad upon somebody just because the Bears didn't do what you thought that they should have done or what you would have wanted them to do, 
what the hell are we doing here, right? And that is to some of my other Bears content creators that just whine and complain. That's to some of my my personal Bears fans that are my friends. I'm talking about in real life outside of podcasting that do that shit. It's all fucking weird. It's just weird, right? The moment, like, we, we've moved on. Caleb is the guy. Let's hope that he can be successful in that role as the guy because this kid has shown a lot of potential. And again, that doesn't mean Jack right now, but the realization of that potential is what could and hopefully will make this a special Chicago Bears team and offense overall. But let me know what you guys think on that down below. All right, let's get into the next one. Uh, Matt Eberfuss didn't just talk about Caleb Williams. He also talked about rookie Romo Dunze and what made him special. He said this, his speed. He's really fast. He's got really good speed. He's got a couple of different gears. He's becoming a really good route runner, and he can track the deep ball. That's what he does. That's what he did in college. That's what he's going to do here, so we're excited about him. Matt Eberflus should be excited about this. We've talked a lot about how this isn't the Matt Eberflus of old. We've gone from Matt Eberflus to Coach Flus, in my opinion. That's kind of the way that I distinct it. And, you know, one of the things that we did see is that me, C-Dub, and Bobby were all kind of surprised by just how fast Romo Dunze is with the size that he has. There's the combination of the two. And Rome, as much as we talk about Caleb, and like I've said, Caleb is, whether justly or unjustly, going to get his lion's share of the focus there. Romo Dunze at 6'3", 215 pounds, and the speed that he has and the way that he's able to dip that shoulder and use his size as well, the pairing of these two players could be what the, the basis of what the Bears' offense is built off of for the next decade, right? And that is what you hope for when you draft a quarterback and go out and get the wide receiver that he wanted and that they wanted to play together. And so, you know, in all the talk about Caleb, which rightfully so, and all the talk about DJ Moore's contract and all the talk about uh, DeAndre Swift and Khalil Herbert and who's going to be what, Romo Dunze could be one of the most important pieces for this Bears offense because of the way that you're able to use him. You have a great route runner in Keenan Allen who is going to be a red zone merchant. In the, for the Chicago Bears. You have Cole Komet, who I think is going to be used extremely well in the red zone as well. You got DJ Moore, and we already saw what DJ Moore was able to do. But Romo Dunze, the fact that he's going to be able to help the Bears exploit so many mismatches and matchups, that that is something that I don't care what the yards tell us at the end of the year, but watch the play. Watch how teams have to decide is, we're gonna, we can only go man-to-man coverage because if we go to zone, Keenan Allen's going to bust up the zone. And if you go man-to-man, DJ Moore or Roma Dunze can. Not every play, but they can make you pay for that. And so that's going to be an interesting thing to watch in all of this, is the way that these three wide receivers ha- can all be have synergy in the way that they're using the passing game. Now, I've said it before. What happens on paper isn't necessarily what happens in reality. The Bears are going to have to show that. But overall, like we we have the potential to be this. We have the skill set to be this. And Romo Dunze is a very important part of all of this. Somebody who's only had one reception so far in preseason, but you know and you can tell how this coaching staff feels and how much they love Romo Dunze. He is the future of the wide receiver here for the Chicago Bears, and the future is also the present because he's going to be used in a way that can help every aspect of the team. And so, you know, to hear that Rome's speed is special, to hear that he's becoming a better route runner, absorb everything that you can from Keenan Allen this year because Romo Dunze, I said it before, in a lot of drafts, would have been the first wide receiver off the board. He wasn't in this one because of the talent overall at that wide receiver position, but make no mistake about it, the potential of Romo Dunze is through the roof, and I'm glad that this Bears team is as confident in that as well because that's how you start building things. That's how, again, we talked about this. This is very much a foundation-laying season for the Chicago Bears, of us laying what the foundation of what this team can be, and then through growth, through development, through additions. We're going to keep building on top of this foundation and build something that hopefully is not only sustainable, but is successful over the course of years. And Romo Dunze is a big part of that. I I can't stress enough how what Ryan Poles has done with revamping this offense from his first year here to now has been tremendous. And it got to still get to wins, right? That's what we've talked about so often. It means nothing if it's not getting wins. So we got to get this to wins. We got to start converting to wins this year. But ultimately, it comes back to this. And like I keep saying, how we utilize this talent is the thing that could make it special. And you have to put your talent in a certain position to be able to succeed in that. And that gets us to our last topic for today. And that is Shane Waldron and his comments, things that make Shane Waldron 
different as far as from Lugetti. And this is a big thing. I don't want to overlook at all how major this is as far as getting some different outlook and what Shane Waldron can bring to this team. Because, listen, regardless of how you look at Lugetti, there are some people that blame it on fields or whatever else. That doesn't matter at this point. But at the end of the day, uh, Albert Breer said this. Uh, in regards to after a conversation with Shane Waldron, he says this. After that, during the five-week break between the off-season program and training camp, Waldron walk, worked with Hel- uh, Hewlett to put together a plan for Williams to get valuable hours over the summer that would submit so much of what he'd already learned and, and, and also get the best place and get to the best pace possible with his mechanics and, in particular, his drops. Waldron and quarterbacks coach Kerry Joseph gave Hewlett the way to teach drops from under center they also told Hewlett and Williams, according to Hewlett, Hewlett uh, that if Caleb gets to it, uh, gets to it a way that fits the timing and he's more comfortable with, uh, with into the timing he's more comfortable with, we can mesh that together. Listen here, bro. Like when you talk about developing a quarterback, when you talk about dumbing down your system or getting your quarterback up to speed, that's what it is. Shane Waldron evaluated the things that Caleb Williams did good and what he got to see live. Not just tape from USC, but what he got to see live and looked at his mechanics and said, you know, I, I compare this to one thing, right? And I know not everybody's going to be a Bulls fan, so this is going to go over some people's head, but we're going to bring it back in. Kobe White, last season, the, Bear, uh, well, the Bulls created a player development department and brought in one of the world-renowned shooting coaches in Peter Patton. Kobe White has said how he's been such a good shooter over his career through high school and college, nobody's really critiqued his shot. What Peter Patton did is took a look at Kobe's shot in certain mechanics and said, hey, if you just do these things a little bit different, you can have more success in that. And Kobe White did that and had one of the best seasons, no, the best season of his NBA career. It's very much so, could be something similar with Caleb. Not to say that Caleb has never been coached or anybody's ever told him to tweak some of his mechanics, but when you're usually so good and you have such a, a natural ability to be good at certain things, to have somebody to come in and say, yeah, you're great at this, but if we tweak this little thing particular in your game you can get better results potentially from it that is how you take raw talent and turn it into realized skill right and that's what Shane Waldron is trying to do and that's something already different than what we've seen from a guy like like Luke Getze and so listen Shane Waldron has also talked about how you know Kayla Williams has the ability to recognize and recall what happened which is something that we talked about before what the Bears are doing here and what Shane Waldron is doing here is they're allowing Caleb Williams to be himself, but saying, hey, in doing you, we're not asking you to do anything that's outside of your skill, but let's refine your skill so we can get the most out of it. Let's refine it and make it better so we can strengthen. If you can strengthen things that are already your skill, then, hey, we can make that, we can make that near perfection. And Shane Waldron having that mindset and teaching Caleb Williams those things, those are things that could pay off later, further and as the career goes on. And so we all want Caleb Williams to overachieve. But the one thing that that nobody can want it more than us, or, or no, we can want it no more than, is the coaching staff here because they're working with Caleb day in and day out to improve, refine, and execute. That's what they're doing with Caleb Williams. And Shane Waldron, listen, I've talked about it before. I had an episode a few days ago and talking about how you can already see the bones of what can make Shane Waldron's offense special. And we haven't even dived. We haven't even seen probably 95% of the playbook for the Chicago Bears. What we've been seeing is a very vanilla playbook. And so when you add in those refinements, when you add in those extra wrinkles, when you add in those things that can make your team special, that's where you start hitting those launching points. So Shane Waldron, uh, the quarterback's coach, everybody on that offensive staff, they all know what's ahead of them. They all know and understand how this thing needs to go and how they need to have success in certain areas for this Bears team to get wins. And that is something that, again, Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus, the way that they built this offensive staff was intentional. And that's not something we've always seen here with the Chicago Bears is the ability to be that intentional about how you are building out and developing your squad. And so let's hope that that gets us and takes us to a place of, of actually having success, right? It's not just about beating the Green Bay Packers, even though I would love to beat the Green Bay Packers, right? It's also about having success overall against everyone. And listen, the, inter- the Bears are in one of the toughest divisions in football. It's going to be a, a really tough division. And not to say that, you know, it all comes down to that, but that's, of course, what you want to see is you want to see that. And, you know, even Kayla Williams saying things like the defensive guys telling him things that can make him better, right? It's speaking up. Uh, I'm sure some of that is talking some shit, 
But, you know, overarchingly, um, this team is, is built to help Caleb succeed. And this team is built for this offense to be truly dynamic. And that, in part, and largely also comes down to who Shane Waldron and this offensive coaching staff is. So let's hope that that's the case, man. Overall, I'm looking really, I'm really, really excited for what this season is and, and, and can be. Um, you know, before we go as well, we got uh, Bleach Report came out with a list of X factors for every team, and they listed Keenan Allen as the X factor. And before I go, I want to say yes, Keenan Allen could be the X factor, not only because of mentorship to Romo Dunze, Tyler Scott, anybody else, but also. The fact that, that Keenan Allen is just reliable. And to have somebody that's that reliable, that good of a route runner, right? Because you can be a really good wide receiver without necessarily running the best routes. Some of that comes down to physical ability. Keenan Allen being that and being and stepping into a veteran leadership role for the Chicago Bears team that is a lot of young players in, in, in impact positions for the Bears. Keenan Allen can and probably will absolutely be an X factor for this Bears team. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if maybe he's one of the captains of this team. We'll see what happens there. Um, that's something that we haven't really talked about a lot either, but we'll talk about that. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and or voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, but that's thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, Die Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.